JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to GFD Traders Espresso with me, that is only Charles, because today is the 22nd of March 2021. So, yep, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD Research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the Research tab right there on the top. So now then guys, uh, jumping into the charts, the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225 and the index closed in the red today. So um, the Friday's decline, last week's kind of uh, decline uh, continued and uh, yep, uh, we saw the index here falling below the 21 day EMA, below, uh, falling below this uh, 29,519 zone and yes of course this now kind of uh, potentially increases the chances for a further move lower however um, as you can see we have this little short term upside support line taken from the low of the 22nd of December now don't get me wrong although it is a little bit on the tentative side because we only have two touches here but nevertheless we'll keep an eye on it because if this uh, tentative upside line provides support then we could see something like this happening where we could see a rebound and the push back up. So for now, what I'm going to be aiming here for is going to be this area around the 28,980 zone and this upside line. But if that line gets broken, now this is yep, uh, this is where it could become a little bit more interesting for more sellers. And uh, we could see the um, the index sliding further south, especially if um, if if the price falls somewhere below this 28,325 uh, territory, roughly around here. As you can see. Pretty Previously, it acted as a very nice area of support. Uh, let's see if it can do the same thing this time. Um, if it can, uh, then yes, uh, we will. Um, we will. We might see a, maybe a, re a rebound here and a push higher. However, uh, again, we'll go slowly, step by step, on this one because there are uh, on the way lower. There are a lot of obstacles, and like I said, even this one here, the uh, twenty-eight thousand three hundred twenty-five. Because if it provides good support, and then we see the index rebounding higher then maybe we'll see ours we'll see here a possible little range here but again that's maybe me getting ahead of myself here a little bit for now uh, what i'm going to do here is like i said i'm going to aim for this uh, 28980 zone together with this upside line and then i'll take it from there if that area area does provide good support a nice rebound could be possible if it fails then i'll start looking at some lower areas but of course uh, we'll slowly step by step just uh, because we do have a bunch of good air, uh, support levels here underneath uh, shanghai composite very quickly on this um so the index uh, drifted higher, uh, unlike uh, unlike Nikkei, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, for now, it's still the same game plan remains, to be honest. I mean, I'm not really doing much here with Shanghai Composite because it's still stuck um, between these levels. So uh, for the upside, what I need here is I need to see a pop above the, well, uh, looking at this picture now, uh, probably a pop above the 3,460. 
55 territory uh, might just do the trick for more buyers and we could see more of them joining in especially if the daily candle uh, or, or should I say if we see a daily close above this area above the 3465 and also maybe above the 21 day EMA just could maybe just would be that little uh, cherry on top to strengthen the um, strengthen the upside scenario and uh, yep then we could go for some higher levels but for the downside and uh, like I said if for example if the uh, EMAs here continue let's say to provide resistance then yes we'll keep an eye on this 3392 territory a nice good drop below it yep uh, may open the door towards uh, towards lower areas so keep your eyes on that one. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. And uh, here you can see the index um, kind of is, um, I would say, um, well, is kind of drifting lower right now. I mean, it, I've talked about this uh, this index uh, last week, and basically what I said that if we get that drop and it close below the 32,793 territory, then of course, yes, uh, further declines could be possible. Uh, and uh, yep, we could go for uh, for some lower areas here. But um, again, we'll go slowly on this. Uh, for now, if we take a look at the cash index for example we'll see that the price is already kind of trading uh, let me just cl click on that so it's the price is currently trading at around 32,500 levels so basically we are near the Friday's low and uh, if you want to go for some lower areas wait for that Friday's uh, drop below the Friday's low and then yes of course we'll go for that 21 day EMA initially or some of these other levels like for example the 32,000 mark um, now this is of course where it's going to be going to be very interesting to watch if we can uh, over uh, if we can clear that but let's not forget that overall we are still trading above this little uh, short term I would say um, or actually more of a medium term upside support line uh, drawn from the low of the uh, 12th of November and uh, in a way if we start seeing a drop below the 32,000 mark then this will of course lead the index further south or should I say could lead the index further south um, but we'll be very careful and uh, nevertheless because all this move here lower up until this upside line up to this upside upside line could be classed as a temporary correction so that's why guys be very careful with that um, and uh, yep for now everything's looking quite nice and uh, kind of let's say nice for the sellers uh, but of course uh, we'll go slowly with that uh, because again it could drift lower for example it could make its way towards that 21 day EMA find support somewhere around here and then reverse and push higher again so keep that in mind but so far the idea that I've mentioned uh, last week is working out a drop uh, and a close below the uh, 32,793 territory could open the door towards further declines and so far it is pushing uh, towards the downside so the idea is working out um, DAX, so the German index, uh, also drifted lower last week. It um, found support near this uh, hurdle right here, the 14,595 territory. It did overshoot it a little bit, as you can see, but um, it did kind of, uh, let's say, um, it did kind of uh, find support here and uh, currently it's trading just around this area around this hurdle so um, long story short if we see a further slide here a push um, even let's say if we can what we can do here is not only to keep an eye on this uh, 14,595 if you're not comfortable comfortable with that level what you could do here is keep your eyes on the Friday's close uh, and that's around the 14,563 territory so a nice good drop below it may lead to a bit of a larger correction to the downside where we could target the 14,409 zone or the 21 day EMA together with this little short term upside line drawn from the low the 26th of February and then we could take it from there. Um, 
and uh, if of course this area provides good support we could see a nice rebound and a push higher but if it fails well I mean this is where uh, it could start uh, kind of uh, drifting further south um, we could start uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on some of these obstacles here for example one of them is the high of the 3rd of March here near the 14,197 territory and uh, well we can round it up if you want towards the 14,200 so we can keep an eye on that a nice good drop below it yep uh, may strengthen the downside scenario and uh, yep uh, we could go for maybe for that a test of that 100 day EMA or even to 200 day EMA however guys that's all this downside scenario, uh, I'm talking only if we see a break of this upside line, then maybe a drop below the 14,200 territory. For now, don't get me wrong, there is still a chance for a, a recovery here back to the upside. So, um, yep, be very careful with that. So that's why I probably I'll go slowly on this uh, with the downside. Uh, and uh, if we do see a drop below the Friday's low, then yes, uh, we'll go for a, these levels here the 14,409 zone uh, and then we'll keep an eye on the 21 day EMA together with the upside line. Uh, silver um, or actually let me just before jumping into silver gold uh, the more popular one and uh, yep, we are drifting back below this downside line taken from the high of the 6th of January. But most importantly, probably uh, this is kind of this downside line got violated. And uh, in a way, it's kind of... Uh, showing less um, let's say less significance so probably we can uh, get rid of it and uh, we can see that the 21 day EMA was the one to uh, to keep an eye on even this 1740 territory uh, initially did provide good resistance but then got violated so also we can get rid of it and uh, what I'm gonna keep an eye on right now will be the low of last week near the 1719 level and uh, a nice good drop below that area Area may uh, open uh, the door towards a, a further correction here uh, to the downs and the reason why I'm saying correction because well overall we're still trading above this upside line uh, drawn from the mm, the low of the 20th of May um, of 2019 so in a way yep uh, anything any move up 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 to that up to that line could be considered as a temporary correction so let's keep an eye on that one uh, but like I said if you if you're kind of not really comfortable with this little kind of uh, pat, uh, trading activity right now, then like I said, yep, keep your eyes on the low of last week near the 1719 zone. A drop below it may open the door to slightly lower areas. For the upside, I need to see at least a push above the 1760 territory in order to consider a, a bit of a larger correction here to the upside. Now, the reason why I'm saying correction here and correction there, because basically uh, we are also trading below this downside line taken from the high of the uh, 7th of August. So of last year so uh, in a way we're kind of coiling up here a little bit it's not an ideal triangle I would say but uh, we are kind of coiling up here so yep I'll keep an eye on that one um, now jumping into silver and uh, here yes we are approaching this uh, this area here that I talked about previously the 20 uh, the 25 Point, uh, 45 territory roughly around here I need to see a drop below that area before let's say considering or should I say getting a little bit more comfortable with uh, with the downside but um, yeah for now uh, let's see how this is gonna play out we are getting closer to this area um, we are now below the 100 day EMA so let's see if this can uh, uh, drop all the way to the the current lowest point of March near the 24 uh, point uh, 24.83 territory here uh, or to this uh, this 200 day EMA which is not far from the uh, 24.35 level and that's going to be my next target here so so yeah keep your eyes on that uh, for now I'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside but again I'm not rushing into anything because uh, we need to see we need to be very careful here because if suddenly let's say this area does provide support and we see a nice strong reversal back up then yep um, Maybe the upside could be back on the table. However, for me, for the upside, I need to see a push above the 26.45 level right here in order to get a little bit more excited with, yep, with higher areas. Uh, DXY very quickly on this. So uh, the dollar index, I talked about this um, last week and I said to you, keep your eyes on this 91.96 territory. So we're finally getting another pop above this. However, 
Uh, will we get a continuation move higher? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, so far, uh, the idea kind of is working out. So, yep, if we see that daily candle today staying above this 91.96 territory, then yes, we'll go for a bit of a larger correction here to the upside. For the downside, I need to see a drop below the 91.36 territory here in order to get uh, comfortable with, let's say, examining a slightly lower areas. Um, I can see in the chat room, good morning from Kirsten. Good morning to you too. I'm hoping, I hope you are having a wonderful start of uh, this week. So, yep, uh, good morning. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, morning. Uh, so, jumping into uh, another another instrument here, uh, WTI Oil. Um, and you can see that so far the idea that I mentioned uh, last week is kind of also working out. So, the idea was that um, after we saw this nice strong decline. I said that we might see a bit of a corrective move here higher. However, if it corrects higher but struggles, let's say, to bypass the 61 uh, so or let's round it up to the 62 territory uh, together with this 21 day EMA, then another slide here could be possible. So as you can see, we didn't really uh, reach this area. However, um, maybe today we could see a push higher. And uh, But we, if we still continue to trade below this area, then yep, another slide could be possible towards this um, towards this upside support line, uh, drawn from the low of the 20th of April of last year. Um, and then we would take it from there. Uh, for now, um, all eyes are going to be on this. And uh, let's see how this is going to play out. Good again. But again, for now, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside. However, don't get me wrong, given that during the early hours right now, we are, or we are already seeing a bit of a uh, decline here. Uh, maybe we could see a slight correction back up here. Maybe, like I said, test of the test the 62 territory with, together with the 21 day EMA. And then if it fails to move above it, then yes, another slide could be possible. For the downside, oh, sorry, for the upside, um, I need to see a break of this, um, of this um, downside line here taken from the high of the 8th of March. And then, yep, uh, maybe we could go for some higher levels. Now, Bitcoin, uh, so uh, here, and um, uh, let me just get rid of this upside line, kind of probably no longer valid. Oh, actually, let me reuse it because what I'm looking at here right now is because Bitcoin is basically stuck I would say, um, and also this level, the 58,321 is no longer needed. Uh, previously, I, I thought maybe we could see a little range here, but um, yep, that didn't really work out. So back to the drawing board and uh, what I'm going to be uh, looking at right now, uh, I'm going to be looking at a little uh, potential uh, triangle pattern here. Um, so basically, we can see that the crypto it seems to be coiling up here a little bit. So let me just grab a trend line. Uh, it seems to be coiling up, which means that we are preparing for maybe a possible breakout here. Um, again, don't get me wrong. I mean, for now, I'm going to just take a bit of a neutral stand here and I'm going to wait for a violation of one of the sides of this little triangle. And uh, yeah, if we get a push above the upper bound here, then yes, um, higher levels could be met. We could tra travel towards the uh, the current all time high near the 61,700 level, approximately around there. Um, and then, yep, we could go for a uh, a further move north if that area gets cleared. For the downside, pretty straightforward. The same scenario if we get a drop below this, um, below the lower side of the triangle and also below the 21 day EMA, then yes, uh, we could go for uh, some lower levels here. But again, let's wait and see. Uh, this is what I think we don't have much. Oh, we did have the Chinese um, PBOC loan prime rate, okay, which came out. It came out as expected, so no, no kind of fireworks there. But in general, the day is going to be a little bit more on the calm side, I would say. So, uh, we, as I can see here, there, are, there in the U.S., we have the existing home sales. But um, let's see if that drives the market or not. But I think that main, mainly. Uh, is going to be uh, the coronavirus, the news around the coronavirus. So, yeah, uh, if, and the whole kind of vaccination issue. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll see how that's going to play out. For now, like I said, looking at, for example, this picture here, ADUSD also drifted lower. Of course, the risk sentiment kind of changed to a risk off one uh, on, on at the end of last week. And, it, and that's why we saw the 
the pair here. Um, the AUDUSD drifting lower dollars, the dollar index strengthened as well. So yep, um, all this kind of rolled into AUDUSD uh, pushing lower. Now, uh, previously I spoke about this level right here, the uh, 0.76 six um ninety two territory roughly around here so I need to see a drop below this I need to see a good move and a daily candle staying below this in order to go for slightly lower areas but um yeah guys for now for now uh, let's see how all this is gonna play out um and uh, yeah, if we get that drop here below this, then yep, I'll go for, uh, initially I'll aim for this 0 0.90, uh, 0 0.7622 or the 100-day uh, EMA, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, NZD CAD also, something that I keep uh, keep talking about and keep mentioning, um, that, I mean, and you see why, I mean, this is a very, very beautiful um, kind of formation, I would say, and uh, basically for now, uh, I'm still kind of, I still need that good daily candle staying below the 0 0.8942 uh, zone uh, we keep getting overshoots but we are not really seeing that daily candle to remain below it so uh, but at the same time it's struggling with this downside line taken from the high of the 25th of February so uh, that means of course uh, still the trend is to the downside however we need that confirmation drop but um, we're not really getting that so yep let's uh, let's wait this one out and uh, let's see if we can actually eventually get this daily candle to remain below this hurdle if so then yes lower levels could be met uh usd jpy very quickly here um so we're stuck here um and uh yeah i mean i'm gonna take a bit of a neutral stand on this one because it's a little bit tricky here right now although yes the trend is still to the upside because we're uh, trading trading well above this uh upside line drawn from the low of the 6th of january however the fact that we are trading well above it kind of uh, gives a bit of a chance for a bit of a corrective move lower however the dollar index is on the stronger side so will it um, will it go higher well I mean we'll just have to wait and see uh, but um, if it suddenly drops here below this 108.34 territory somewhere around here then we'll go for a bit of a larger correction to the downside and basically if the yen buying will outweigh the dollar buying if the equities start uh, turning south then uh, yes we could see uh, USD JPY drifting more to the downside however let's not exclude the possibility of seeing a pop up of the 109.23 territory um, if we get a nice good daily candle staying above it and we're not gonna get another false breakout then yes um, higher levels could be met uh, Euro CHF, another interesting one, which I'm gonna, which I haven't looked at for quite a while, and let me just clear up this chart very quickly. Um, and uh, yep, for basically what I wanted to show you that um, so. Um, we are uh, kind of still on an uptrend here uh, and we are trading above well above this upside line uh, taken from the low the 18th of May to uh, 2020 but um, from the shorter term perspective as you can see yes we are still hanging above the 21 day EMA which is a positive sign but for now I mean we can see that also the pair is coiling up and it's stuck in this little triangle pattern um, and uh, let me just quickly put this one on the chart and there we go so that's the uh that's the case here so um we need to see um a um a push here through one of the sides before we could consider the next let's say short-term directional move so if we get a break through this upper side then yes it could increase the chances for a further push higher um, but again another thing that we need is the daily candle to remain outside this triangle we, we don't want to get a false breakout and then it could just reverse and, and drift back inside the pattern so again we have seen these scenarios happening several times so that's why we just want to be a little bit more on the safe side and if we do see a break of this downside line in the uh, and or the upper side of the triangle and uh, we see the daily candle staying above it then yes we will go for slightly higher levels maybe initially uh, targeting the, uh, the the highest point of March the current highest point of March near the 1.1151 two territory for the downside yes of course a break through the uh this lower side of the triangle could do the trick for more 
uh, sellers. And uh, finally, EURUSD. So uh, the pair is drifting to the downside a little bit here, but uh, near this 1.1880 zone. I spoke about this level uh, last week, and I said that in order to go for the downside, we need to see that daily handle to stay below this. I mean, uh, yes, false breakouts don't really do here. Uh, good, any good for either of the sides, to be honest. Um, that's why uh, we would like to see the daily candle to remain below this area, below the 1.1880, in order to aim for the 200-day EMA or even below that. Um, for now, I'm going to take a bit of a careful approach, cautiously bearish approach, I would say even. Mm, but if it starts reversing back up here and comes back closer to the 1.1990 zone, now that's where it could become very, very interesting for more buyers again. So keep your eyes on that. And by the way, again, for the buyers, only in the short run, because I forget that we're still trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 6th of January. So guys, uh, that's it for this session. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, your views, your likes, your comments, guys, really do. So thank you very much for that. Um, if you have a or sorry, if you well, if you actually, if you have some time later on for uh, at around 13:30, traders tea time, join me then. We'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, uh, and then yeah, we'll take it from there. Uh, but I hope you have a fantastic day today. Stay safe, have your stop losses in place, and everything will be fine. Thank you very much, and bye bye.